right now on VFN TV, we're going to be talking about the glory of God. Imagine God showing up and His honey, thick, warm glory just enveloping you. Well, that just happened, and we're going to share a powerful encounter, and maybe in this program, you are going to be touched by the glory of God right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Man, we're going to be talking about the glory of yes. God today. Powerful. The powerful glory of God. Understand this, that God is powerful. I can't wait to share with you. God gave me this prophetic dream, this night vision of being literally outside the throne room of God and that uh, we're going to talk about it in a different program, but understand that He's powerful, He's holy, His glory is amazing. There's a reason why cherubim and seraphim go around Him going, holy, 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 holy. holy. you know, He's awesome, but he lo and He loves you. And, 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 and so when He shows up, I mean, when this holiness of God shows up, when He, he comes into the room, you know, where you're at, the glory of God, the presence of God, not just, you know, you, you know there's all kinds of the, He's so awesome, He's ever revealing, and we're talking about the presence of God here, that, 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 but there's a time when He shows up with this weighty blanket, kind of the, the kabod the, of God, yeah. the weightiness of God, and the, it's like, it's not, a, it's not a negative thing, it's like being covered in a nice, warm, blanket, awesomeness heavy. blanket of yeah. God, and that sometimes you can't get up for a while, you know, and it's all, it's just awesome. Well, I know I want to tell you, I want to tell you about this encounter, a couple of encounters, because today's all about the glory of God and what we've experienced in the glory of God. And this one particular man, his name is Blake Barr, and he is a businessman. He's a mechanic. Maybe you're a mechanic or know somebody who's a mechanic. And he has his own business and you know, he was having difficulty and struggle with his company and it wasn't doing like he wanted it to do. So he was going to have to put it on hold. Yeah. And then, you know, and work because he's, he he's a lot of talents and he can work in different places. And so he was going to work at this other particular place, but that's not what his heart was. So sure. he was very sad. I mean, he was very sad. He was, he was obtuse, you know, <laughs> and he's going through these difficult time in his life, you know, and uh, you and I were going to the Gulf Coast Pastors Conference at Church of His Presence with Pastor John Kilpatrick. Powerful conference, you know, where the speakers were. Jim Raley, Samuel Rodriguez, Nathan Morris. Do yourself a favor and order the DVD set. You're going to be blessed. You're going to need this in your life. Yeah. But it was an amazing, amazing Well, time. yeah, and you can get it at johnkilpatrick.org. John you can see that right there. But understand, when we were there, I mean, I mean, when God just showed up such a powerful way, Pastor John Kilpatrick was scheduled to speak on Friday night. Yeah. And when God showed up, he just like, I'm not touching that. And he just kind of facilitated us in, in the presence of God and God's glory came down. Well, in the midst of this weekend when we were together, you had this mechanic, Blake Barr, real great man. He happens to be my son-in-law and I know exactly you know, how, you know, how he mm -hmm. thinks. He's very, maybe this is you, maybe you're very analytical, you're very logical. You know, and he was one of the people that would just, if you see somebody get touched by the power of God, and you know, everybody reacts differently. Some sure. people that, if you give a million a millionaire a thousand dollar bill, they're kind of like, oh, that's kind of nice. I can buy some coffee with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but if you give a person that has no money a thousand dollar bill, their reaction is going to be different. Sure. And if you have some man that's always in the presence of God, and and maybe he might take it for granted, but as somebody who's been so dry, maybe that's you that you desperately desperately want to touch from God. And God wants to touch you, but you're just your whole mind is getting in the way, and you're going through this difficult time. That's exactly what was happening with Blake. And so what 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 he does? He's, a, he's an analytical person, so he thinks it in his head. He has no problem writing it out, but he had no idea that when you speak it from your mouth, that's when the power of God comes out. Yeah. You know, God encounters your words. It's the speaking of what God does and did. And so what I asked him to do, I said, listen, you know, he was going to share about his encounter because what happened was in the middle of being obtuse and just kind of, not, I don't want to be here at this, this pastor's conference, uh, he got touched by the power of God. and Outside of himself, outside, outside of, of his, his will, yeah. outside yeah. of his will, yeah. God had a different plan for him that night. Right. And so he made in front of people that he criticized them and judged them for when they got touched by the glory of God, they would fall to the ground sometimes, sometimes. You think about it, you're an electrical being, your nervous system works off electrical firings. Your mind fires, you know, somebody has an, epileptic, uh, or an epileptic seizure, that's just everything firing at the same time. So if God's powerful, and He is, and He touches you like a 220, <laughs> you don't know what you're going to do. Well, God literally touched him in such a way that when He got hands laid on him, He fell like he, everybody He criticized that would fall before. He fell like they fell, 
And here he is on the ground. His mind is thinking too much. And he, but he can't get up. He's under sweating under the power <laughs> of God. And he's like, shut up to himself. I just need to stay here. As a matter of fact, it, it, so I asked him, I said, can you share your testimony at the Dream Center? And you can find out more at the Dream Center at vinefellowshipnetwork.org. But I wanted him to share it. Well, this is the first time he ever said it. He typed it out. He thought it. He even shared it on his social media text. But he never spoke it out of his mouth. And when he began to speak at the VFM Dream Center just this last Sunday and share it, you know, he and I were standing there as he was sharing it and understanding what's happening to us. The presence of God is falling upon us. The glory of God is manifesting in us. And this man who's together and always does it just right and thinks it through, he totally couldn't even talk these words out because God was just showing up. And it wasn't, understand, this is not a negative thing to us. This is awesome. I mean, yeah. God is just enveloping us and he's loving on us. And so you hear us talking, but understand, and maybe you're going to experience the same glory of God. I believe, you know, God says that he, the, the whole earth is filled with His glory. That in Acts 17, He says that, you know, He's right there beside you. He's just waiting for you to reach out like Blake did. And, and you, to reach out at that moment and say, God, I want your glory in my life. I want to experience what they're experiencing. And I believe right now, as you watch this, you're going to be touched by the glory of God. And all we're doing is just sharing and, and I had to sit down because if I didn't sit down, I don't think I was going to fall down. Fall down. You know, and, 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 and I'm, being, I'm being overcome by the presence. I'm loving it. He's loving it. At the same time, we're trying to say what God did. That was just powerful. As a matter of fact, you got to just hear, this is Blake Barr sharing about the power of God, the anointed God, the changing presence of God. And at the same time, it was happening again right there as we were speaking it. Check it out. So uh, if you take a moment, we were at the uh, Gulf Coast Pastors Conference, and uh, God bless you. Can I ask you this question first? What condition were you in upon arrival? Filled with joy, bubbling, hmm. joking a lot? Not a good one. Just no. <laughs> really didn't want to go. I, I wasn't in the mood to be around people. Great. I understand. And just, yeah. You were being really challenged. Very aggravated. Very good. Very aggravated. Okay, so. that's his condition. So share with us what happened. Um, well, those of you that don't or aren't friends with me on Facebook. Um, you get to see a lot of car stuff and welding and fabrication and stuff that I do in my business. Brought to you by A505. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> um, but I also like to share my walk with God to people. And um, this is just one of them. Um, but we went to the Gulf Coast Pastors Conference and... It was when I had just made the decision that I was going to have to take my shop back to part-time. So I just, you know, work wasn't coming in, and I had to figure something out. And, you know, being in my head and everything just wasn't good. Right. But your shop is actually your business. My shop is my business. Mm -hmm. It's the sole income for the family. So you can't just, like, wait around. But, hey, well, maybe it'll come. But you got to, you know, be progressive and plan it out and be prepared. So you were pumped, excited, exhilarated, filled with it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. No. Okay. Um, so many people think they're in that state. There's no way God can bless me. That he doesn't yeah. know I'm going through this thing. So that was Thursday. Um, and Nathan Morris was there. Sad. No, it was Jim Rayleigh first, wasn't Rayleigh. it? Mm -hmm. um, A minister ministering there, yeah. Yeah. But it was Nathan Morris that kind of, I don't know if I can say it on Evangelist. live. Evangelist. Pulled my out of my. Okay, that's important. Go ahead. Where was your head? Pull my head out. <laughs> pull my <laughs> pull my head out of my butt. I didn't want to say that, but he said, "Might as well go with it, right?" No, I'm okay. Um. So, hey, Lord, we just pray for healing. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um. So I was better after the first night, but then Friday we all, we all were. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It was a good night. Um. You could then, feel the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Right? And that can cure anything. Yeah. So, um, no, Friday night was was supposed to be. Um, no, that was Kilpatrick. Brother Kilpatrick on sat Friday night. That's part of this too. But um, so Saturday night, um, well, I wasn't sure if I was even going to share this on social media because um, being kind of transparent about this, and you just don't know what kind of reaction you're going to get from people, but um, wanting to be transparent with people in my walk with God, I felt it would be important. Um, and I called this on fire. Whew. 
Jesus. Feel the Lord, right? This is what I'm talking about. Is he not awesome? Shoo. I'm not doing it. <laughs> if I was doing it, <laughs> we'd be, we'd be, we'd be, no, we'd be oh, don't stop, Lord, don't stop. <laughs> but come out, bring his, bring his. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I was Shoot. at the Gulf Coast Pastors Conference Saturday night. Uh, it was the last night of the three-day event, and uh, evangelist Nathan Morris was speaking about the gates of heaven. Oh. Go ahead. I'm going to get through this. Sorry. Shoo. I'm going to get full here in a second. Oof. Shoo! <laughs> I really thought I'd just be able to come up here and talk. Me too. <sighs> All right, so he was speaking about the gates of heaven and being a gatekeeper. As standard per, per an evangelist, they don't just sit down or stand still to preach. They walk around and get very emotional and very intense. It's really quite exciting to see someone so on fire in a nice suit who's literally drenched in sweat from the raw emotion. I grew up in a traditional Methodist church. Really, the only time we prayed aloud or anything like that was during your baptism. Um, really, you know, relaxed environment, but nobody really spoke when the pastor was speaking or any kind of yelling out or... Anything like that. Um, so needless to say, I come from a background which would generally say, this is weird, or really. Is this really happening? Is this really real? Shoot. When people are touched and they fall to the floor. I was always the guy judging people who fall out and look like a fish out of water. Who am I to judge what they are feeling? Maybe it's acting. Maybe they're so hungry for God. They're so hungry for God, it just moves them in a way that is uncontrollable. I don't know. And after my experience, I will never judge ever again. So here I am singing and worshiping with my eyes closed, believing, believing that Nathan was on the other side of the church. He was um, walking around touching people and praying for them. Next thing I know, it was like a light switch. He touched my forehead and said something very profound to me. Never the same. I think if I would have been prepared and known he was there, I wouldn't have fallen to the floor. But I did. I fell to the floor, an action I just never did understand until it happened to me. I fell to the floor and just laid there and could not help but be overcome with emotion. I literally felt like my body was on fire. I immediately began to sweat, and it was the greatest feeling yet weirdest feeling I believe I've ever encountered. I couldn't move. I've listened to sermons regarding the weight of God and the weight of God's glory. And, that, and it was incredible. I felt so convicted for the judgment I had cast upon others. I couldn't help but be in my head in a time where I just needed to lay there and not think. I kept asking myself, is this real? Why am I laying here? Just get up. But I couldn't. So where am I going with this? After I got up, it took a little while to finally cool down. But I sit here now and reflect on that moment 
and I believe God just wanted to show me a piece of what it would what it's like to be on fire for God and a taste of that experience. Do not judge others, for you will be judged how you judge others. God allowed me to experience something which I basically considered fake or exaggerated for the longest time in order to change my perspective. The Bible talks about what heaven is like, and we experienced a two-hour window of what that was like Friday night. It was the sound of revival. You know the sound in movies where a light shines on a treasure on a treasure chest that has just been opened and it's full of jewels. That's how this sounded. A thousand people worshiping God in their own way, which all had a common ring to it when the sound is put together. It was beautiful. Heaven, heaven isn't just kicking back and drinking a cold one. Heaven is about worshiping God. If you think worship is weird or judge those who worship differently or worship at all, but you want to go to heaven, why do you want to go to heaven? Worship is the sound of heaven. If you don't like God, Jesus, or the things of God on earth, why would you want to go to heaven? That is the question I'm faced with. And there was a shift in my life the minute I was told I would never be the same from that moment forward. When I die and face Jesus at the gates of heaven, he will hold me accountable for everything I did in my life. He will hold me accountable for everything I did in my life and show me everywhere in my life which I could have done better or reached out to someone who desperately needed God. I want to enter the narrow gates of heaven and be welcomed up as a faithful servant who spoke the truth, was kind and loving, and praised God for grace and mercy. Do you want that? More, Lord. Feel him, Lord, God. Feel him, Lord. More. More, Lord. More, Jesus. More, Lord. Feel him, God. More. But the glory of God just broke out in the Dream Center, and people were touched by the glory of God. People began to cry. People were healed. People fell under the glory of God. And literally, I couldn't stand because it's almost like my, my legs, become, my knees became rubber. <laughs> right? You actually grabbed oh, yeah. a hold of my knee. <laughs> It was moving. It was, it was moving around. And it's a whole job. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like it's it's. I don't, it, it, the glory of God is just amazing, and you know whatever God wants to do, ever how that's He right. wants to do it. But maybe that's you. You're desperate. You saw Blake, you know, or a man's. Maybe this man is desperate for God, and God responds to desperation, and and just to cry out to Him. Listen, He designed you. He loved you before the moment you was even born. He's called you to himself. He's just waiting for you to reach out and say, God, I want you. I want more of you. And I believe he's going to meet you. And you can find out more at the Vine, at vinefellowshipnetwork.org. Listen, we believe there's going to be the great outpouring of God's glory. You heard us talk about the great awakening and revival. And this is a great harvest of souls that are coming in. But it'll be done by the glory of God, not by man's efforts, but what God does with his presence. Because just like Blake said, you know, in one moment's time, you know, God can change everything in His glory. And that's you. We want to hear from you. Comment below. Write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. We want to hear, is that your hunger? Is that what you want? How is God moving in your life? Today is going to be the greatest days you've ever seen before. And We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. 
So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this and look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. Now we're talking about the glory of God. There is nothing like the glory of God and the presence of God, the transforming power of God. And this is not just some preacher talking. I'm talking about I'm a human being yeah. encountering <laughs> an awesome God and feeling his tangible glory, his weightiness, his power. You know, we were part of the Browns revival, but this is that, that's what God did. Yeah. This is what he's doing now. Yeah. And this is like that on steroids, what Listen, God's doing, right? The person with, an, with a, uh, an argument is always at the mercy of someone with an experience. Right. And you can say what you want with your head, but when you come under the glory and the power of God, it is the most beautiful experience you could ever experience. And right. it's so wonderful. It's, I, I like to say it's, it's the jacuzzi of God, you know what I'm right. saying, where you just, you're in His glory and you literally feel the Lord's presence all over you. And your design, it's like, it's like a, 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 an extension cord plugging into the outlet. That's where that cord belonged. Yeah. So when you plug into God, you were meant for everything that functions. Because, you know, so often we're thinking we have to figure everything out and mm. it has to make sense to us. But the reality is it already made sense to God before it was created. Yeah. He knows the beginning from the end. And you could bring your mess to God and He can make a miracle out of it. Mm. He, can, he can make a message out of it. Because when you walk up, you know, despite, or like Blake was sharing about his business, but maybe that's you and your business and you're thinking, I don't know what to do with this. Bring it to God. Say, God, I, I want an encounter with you. I'll set all yeah. this stuff aside. I'll lay it all down at the cross. I just want more of you. And what happens when you come out of being with God and to that glory cloud, that glory weightiness of God, you, you know, you don't care anymore. Guess what? But God still cares. He cared before you even cared. And he's going to walk you out of that situation. He could just do a mighty things. And what happened coming out of this with, with Blake, here he was with the situation, thinking not knowing what to do. But God had a, had a particular businessman who works on these high-end vehicles, you know, the kind of work he likes to do, and said, listen, here's the key to my company. Here's the hours that you want to work, whatever you want to work. Plus, you can work overtime. Everything that he needed at this time in his life or his family. Yeah. I mean, God provided everything. And now, even people are trying to bring business to his business, which he's like, I don't, part-time right now. And God can just overwhelm you. And what he wants is more of God. Yeah. You think about that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And let's think yeah. about the glory of God is that it's transformational. Yes. You, you can be in whatever state you were, right. but once God touches you and you're under that glory, you come out a completely different person. Well, speaking of that, after Steve Hill ministered at the Browns Revival, yeah. you were like a business guy who's going to come up and shake his hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got, got, got a minute. Tell us what happened there. Well, listen, I, I gave my life to the Lord. I remember coming down to the altar at Brownsville, and, and I came down to shake Steve's hand to say, hey, thanks for the message. Steve Hill, right. Steve Hill, you know, In the great middle of job Revival. evangelist, middle right. of Brown, you know, right. the revival. Mm -hmm. And Steve didn't even hear it, anything right. I said. He just said two words, more Lord. And, and I flew. No, I mean, just, no, no, I flew. no, no, no. Violently. Okay. I just, the power of God hit me so strong. This was not in you to do. Oh, um, you were no. You were in the cool. Yeah, I was, I was too cool. I was 22 years old at the time. Too, too cool to be all, you know, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But I fall down and I start vibrating and shaking like a fish out of water. God's presence came upon me so strong. I was sobbing, crying. I mean, I was undone. Never how did had you, that happen to and me. And when you before. got off, this is what's important. When you got off the floor, yeah. well, how did your life change? You got half of a half of a minute. I've never, ever, ever, ever looked back. I gave my life to the Lord that night, and I've been serving Him every single day from that moment. Right. I encountered God, and He changed me forever. We even gave up a job in government to come out and serve oh, yeah. people who were coming from around the world. Oh, yeah. Umbrellas and oh, yeah. sunscreen and hot dogs oh, and yeah. ice things. And it you was were happy as can be. Happy, happy as can be. Right. I'm telling you, it was God. It was so beautiful. First time I ever heard God's voice. And he, I had a question, God, were you real? And he says, yeah. son, am I real? You just don't even know. Wow. And the rest is history. Maybe that's you. You're thinking, how can God encounter me? Listen, he's ready. He's just waiting for you to go, here I am, God. Yeah. I want you. Whatever that means, whatever it takes, wherever I need to go. If you need to come all the way to the Gulf Coast, to the glory zone, to be touched by whatever it takes, 
You want to go after God. Listen, comment below. Write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. We want to be able to hear from you. But let me pray right now for you. Father God, I just pray that the glory of God, yes, Lord. your glory, Lord, would just envelop the ones watching right now, Father God. That, off, that man that has his business is struggling. That lady that has her businesses is struggling. The family that ministered that's so hungry for your presence, yes. his first love again, her first love. God, we just bless them right now. God, and we ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, End abortion, yes, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray. In Jesus' name, God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.